when I say my topic, of course, it is the Holy Spirit. Hey, hallelujah. Usiseme huyu anahubiri yake, anahubiri kwa Biblia. I'm a firm believer in the word. Hey, amen. Kuna vitu vinne ambavyo the apostles continued daily to do. That is the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 4. What did they do? They continued in the apostles doctrine. That is number 1. Number 2 they continued in fellowship. Itafutia kama nimekosea mimi sikukumbukangi vizuri. Either 2 8 or 4 2 one of them. They continued in what? Number 1 apostles doctrine. Number 2 fellowship. Number 3 breaking of bread. It is written in the Bible. They continue daily in what? The apostles' doctrine. Number two. Um, fellowship. Number three. Breaking of bread. And number four, prayer. There are, there are four things that every believer should continue in. One, you have to be taught doctrine. You have to come and receive the word of God. Two, fellowship. You, you should not neglect the gathering of the people. Number three, breaking of bread, taking the Holy Communion. That is why here on Friday, I normally give people the Holy Communion, especially those who are not feeling well. And number four, prayer. We, we have a system here in this church. Every first week of the month, we have what we call persistent prayers. We do prayers up to 12 in the night, uh, here and even in Barnabas. And then I have given you schedules of how you can pray. You can pray in uh, morning hours from 4 to, to 6. Or you can come for morning glory here from 6.30 to 7.30. Or you can pray in the evening from 5 to 6.30. We have given you those options. Or you can pray at night from 9 to 11. It was Acts 2.42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' word. Doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Now the mistake we have, there are people who don't value some of these things. There are people who don't value prayer, but they are good at doctrine. So we need to mix all of the four for us to be healthy as believers. So you need to pray every day. Uh, you need every now and then to partake in the Holy Communion. Number three, you need to fellowship with fellow people, fellow brethren. Do not disconnect from the church. And of course, you need to have the right doctrine. Kuna watu sikuizi naona everywhere so that they may be popular. They don't, they don't want to teach the right doctrine. You know the doctrine of a Christian is written in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Yon diyo doctrine tunafaa tufuate kama wa Christo. Hebrews chapter 6. Can we read together? Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1. Can we read together? I like re reminding you. Therefore, can we read together? Therefore, leaving the discussion of Elementary principles of the Christ. Simunajua elementary school. Foundation ya mutoto akingia shuleni. Sikuna foundation. Ba baby bobu. A e i o u. A to z. Si tu kutu nasema a b c d. Wawo nasema a book. Do. Oh the yao ni tofauti. Yetu ilikuwa a b c d. E f g h. Wawo nasikia nasema a book. Do. E. Si yuwa mani mipe kiangu mzazi na sumbukanga. That is not K, that is K. They are called the elementary levels. Sasa kila mkristo anafau uwelewe foundation ya mkristo. Wewe umiokoka ni gani. So hapa anasema, kuna mambo sita kila mkristo anafau afundishwe. Number one, the foundation of repentance. Ufai uje kanisani na uende na dhambizaku. Kuna fa utubu. Na ndiyo mimi sande kuna watu wawiri huwa naita. Every Sunday. Wakwanza wakuokoka. Wapiri wakutubu. Kuna dhambi unaona ukonayo. Tubu. Number two. So we repent from dead works. Number two doctrine is faith towards God. Kuafundisha muwe na imani kwa mungu. Imani yako usiweke kwa anko yako kwa anti kwa muzazi. Weka imani kwa nani. Number three. The doctrine of what? Baptisms. Baptism iko na esa hapo. Mana kuna baptism of water. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism of fire. Hey, amen. Hizo ni baptisms. 
tunafaa tuwafundishe the baptism of the holy spirit kujazwa na roho sasa unapata watu wanafundisha vitu na wakristo hawafundishi kuhusu roho mtakatifu hawaambiwi the importance of receiving the holy spirit so we are supposed to be taught on the importance of the holy spirit on the importance of being baptized nilienda mahali mtu akaniambia ni pastor na hajai batizo na maji hajai batizo na maji sasa nikamuuliza kwani ulienda kanisa gani akaniambia mimi nilikuwa naenda hatuko tunabatizo umaanisha huyo muhubiri haelewi the foundations of christianity we are the only people uh, other religions don't baptize people christianity ndiyo yesu aliintroduce vitu kadhaa utazipata kwa hizo dini zingine one holy communion two baptism aya the other one is the laying on of hands kuwekelea watu nini mikono kanisa alifa ilifike mahali aliyekelei watu mikono ati maana mtu amefanyika bishop haezi ombea wagonjwa haezi wekelea watu mikono wajazwe na roho mtakatifu that is why hapa tukimaliza ibada tuna kuanga na session ya kuombea watu because the laying on of hands is very important for the impartation hiyo ni romans 1:11 unaweza aenda kuisoma at another time that i long to see you that i may impart some spiritual gifts in you that you may be established kwa hivyo ni mungu alifanya kuwe na transfer ya kuwekelea mikono yesu aliyekelea watoto mikono aliwekelea wanafunzi mikono so the laying on of hands is very key ufai kukaa kwa kanisa we ni special uwekerangu mikono wale watoto wacha waekelewe mikono wale wameokoka juice wewe unajiona uko mkubwa hata ukisumbuliwa na kaugonjwa kidogo huwezi wekelewa mkono humble yourself si useme amen kuna watu wanafika wanaona wamefika level ya wao ndio wakubwa hata mimi huwa naekelewa mikono i go to my spiritual father and he lays hands on me na hata yeye ana pastor wake he has his own pastor you have to have a pastor no matter how big you are hey, amen lazima uwe na mtu anaweza kukuwekelea nini mikono lakini ufai kufika levo siezi yakelewa mikono mimi nimekuwa mkubwa i'm too big kuwa na title bishop akumaanisha i'm not a christian i'm a believer like you the title bishop ni ya kazi lakini pamoja na hiyo kule sitakuwa bishop kule nitakuwa mfuasi wa Yesu hey, amen so i have to remember bado mimi ni kondo sijageuza sijageuka kuwa beberu hello <laughs> hata uwe bishop bado wewe ni nini kondoo ya Yesu ujageuka kuwa nini venge ama ngom kukao you are still what a kondoo na kondoo inafanya nyenyeke so tumesema hiyo ingine ni nini nasema hii hili maana kumeingia mafundisho mabaya kila mahali you need to be careful so rudisha hapo the laying on of hands hiyo ingine tumesema resurrection of the dead tunafaa kuwakumbusha kuna wakati mtakufa na mfufuke usikae kama hapa duniani ndio mwisho and then the last one itano judgment we are supposed to teach you kuna wakati utasimama mbele ya kiti cha enzi and you will give an account of why you did whatever you did na ndio sababu don't mistreat people in this life because there is a judge unaweza kwepa judgment hapa duniani but there is a judge in heaven ambaye atahukumu watu na kabla hata ufike binguni utahukumiwa pia hapa praise the lord unajua nimeona cases zimeinuka siku hizi za watoto kuwa defiled nasikia mtoto ameshikwa na mwanaume mzima anashika katoto ka miaka kumi. anaweza toroka ahepe hepe lakini kuna hakimu ama judge hatumuoni kwa macho lakini anahukumu kesi hizo So usipige watu usiku ati unapiga mke wako ngumi. We unafanyika kama we ndio Muhammad Ali, we ndio Tyson. Na mgonga gonga tu ngumi mingi. Alafu namwambia nipeleke mahali hata najuana na mapolisi. Always remember kuna polisi mkubwa kuliko hawa hapa duniani. There is a government somewhere. Usipangie mtu kumuua ati na unaweza kuificha. My prayer is that we remember there is eternal what? Judgment. Very briefly now for the five minutes ni konazo I want to introduce what I will be speaking on this week. And if you're writing somewhere I want to be teaching on generational trauma. Generational trauma. What is generational trauma? Generational trauma the word trauma sijui naweza i define vipi na Kiswahili lakini mtu yote ashaikuwa kwa ajali alikuwa na trauma flani. 
anaanza kuwa na phobia fulani ama unapata hiyo ajali ilimwacha with a certain problem in their lives wakati mtu anapoteza mtu amnapenda afariki hiyo inaitwa trauma wakati waizi wanakuja wanaingilia mtu kwa nyumba wanaingiangwa na nini na trauma wakisikia kitu yote kwa unaona huyo mtu anashtuka sasa hizo hiyo ndio jina trauma na nitaidefine vizuri kesho lakini kuna kitu kinaitwa generational trauma if you are not careful some of the things that happened in your family may be affecting you today kuna watu you will not be able to maintain marriage ukiwa mwanaume because mahali ulilelewa kulikuwa na trauma ya marriage usipo deal na hiyo trauma you may view women in a certain perception kuna wanawake mko hapa mlilelewa in very abusive families a man who was very abusive who was your father anapiga mama yako mbele yako anamtesa hiyo picha ikaleta trauma into your mind ukifikiria kuolewa na mwanaume akupiga unaamua afadhali kukaa hivi so hautajua but with the time utakuja ku notice every relationship unaingia unatoka kwanza huyo mtu akiinua sauti kidogo he unaona huyu anakaa kama baba yangu poverty also is a trauma kulelewa kwa umaskini na shida mingi it can affect your brain ufika mahali ile wajua shida moja inafanyanga na umaskini na ndio umaskini sio mzuri umaskini huo unakuondolea the ability to fight unaona hautaki mambo mengi ya kujisumbua ati upate maroni ufanye nini hautaki so una unaingia into a situation na kuna wanaume wameingia into such a such a niita nini such a situation where you notice they are not aggressive anymore in life unajaribu kuambia sifanye sifanye hivi sifanye unaona huyo mwanaume hataki ni trauma ya maisha na mimi nasema lazima you break that trauma lazima you break the spirit of poverty that has been running in your family utangaze hivyo kulikuwa mimi nitabadilika eh amen traumas always ni kama hivi na um, 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 preacher here kuna trauma wahubiri hupitia usipokuwa careful mhubiri unaweza funga nyumba pale na usahau kuhubiri na useme hautawahi shika microphone tena trauma niliwaambia kuna pasta tulienda kufungulia nikiwa mgeni na kuru ni mimi nilienda kumfungulia kanisa hapa na kuru alikuwa ametoka Nairobi na fire fire kwanza mimi nikasimama nikamuitishia rent ya six months na tukasema pia tutamsaidia another six months hiyo hall italipwa baada ya wiki kadhaa nilisikia usiku alihama akatoka shirika walibaki wale wachache wachache hawana pasta so nikatumaniwa niende nikauliza pasta alienda wapi ati alifunga virago usiku akarudi Nairobi baada ya mawiki kadhaa ndio ministry ina trauma unaambia watu watoe sadaka unaenda kuangalia kikapu unaona shilingi 30 sema gai rate huyo mtu anafanya mahesabu wala mnataka kuhubiri na munisikilize kuhubiri kuna takanga patience ukienda kwa sababu ya pesa <laughs> wewe hujaitwa ministry haitakangi uangalie kikapu utatukana na hiyo sande nyingine na ndio unaona mimi siangalia ngi kikapu By the way Mr. Gang kujua mambo ya sadaka. Maana ukijua sana Sunday utakuja hapa. Mimi sitaki mchezo na ujinga. Sasa <laughs> bibi part ya finance, kuhesabu sadaka? No I don't do it. Maana unakasikasirika ukiwa pasta. Sasa niliamua mimi hubiri tu. Mahali hii meli ya Mungu itaenda. Ataishikiria kuna kuna unaona hivi na ubiringi hapa lancha kama ukiangalia kikapu tabidha uwezi ubiri tena kikapu ya, 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 ya sadaka unaona mwingine do you know kuna mtu kuna mtu hata kuna wakati kitambo sadaka huko tukao tunapata mtu ameweka chungu bahasha inawekwa inawekwa ina, ina, ina mchanga you remember mtu anaweka hiyo ndio sadaka yake mwingine chungu sasa unasikia kusimama hapa kuambia watu muna nichukua ufala sasa trauma 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 kuna wahubiri wameacha kuhubiri maana kuhubiri is not a bed of roses vita viko 
hii microphone kushika hii wewe nikuulize how many people talk about ben nganga in this city so many some talk well some talk what na nikisikiliza will i ever preach again nitaambia nyinyi mnajua kuhubiri kujeni muhubiri trauma has destroyed so many people and I'm, i want to teach on generational trauma kuna vitu ilikuwa na baba yako aliipata kwa grandfather na amekuletea wewe nasikia akikuambia eh hey, maroon eh hey, uziwe jaribu maana alichukua roni moja ikamweka ndani hiyo loan vile alipitia unasikia akiambia watoto wacheni niwaambie mambo ya roon muziwai chukua mkitaka kufa mapema sasa so, unaona mtoto akikua anajua loan 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 ina uanga watu sasa huyo mtoto ni wewe umekaa hapo uko na ndevu na umekuwa mzima nakwambia unaangalia anga banki <laughs> ukiona wameandika hapo we can give you a loan sauti ya baba loan ina uanga mtu za mistake shida na watu watu watumie pesa zao mimi zangu kidogo nimetosha sasa mimi nakuuliza nimejaribu hata kuongea na some of preachers in nakuru kuambia wachukue loan wanunue plot ya kanisa anakwambia bisho kama Mungu hataleta wacha ikae kazi ni yake mimi kujipeleka kwa bank nichukue pesa hapana roni zitafanya ukufe kwa madhabahu roni zitafanya upate pressure na sukari mimi sitaki pressure sitaki sukari na sitaki kukufa kwa madhabahu sasa huyo mtu unamwangalia unaona he okay na unajua loan kazi ya loan ni kuchukua future unaileta leo as long as you do it in the right way yeah and you don't borrow beyond your ability wanasemanga wasomi never borrow above 30% of your income hata mimi huwa ninaangalia mahali tumeboro kama kanisa sipitishi hiyo laini maana ukipitisha hiyo laini ndio unaanza kusumbuliwa na den any debt should be below 30% of your income usichukue beyond ati unachukua 100 pesa yote inalipa loan sasa hii town utaanza kujiongelesha na ukisema leo ule ni 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 mpaka una, baadaye unashtuka unasema hey watu wananiangalia kwa sababu you pushed yourself too far don't push kama mimi na, na hakikishanga this church is safe is safe in the area of loans hii kanisa kuna level siwezi chukua loan hiyo maana nitaanza kuuza vitu hapa nitawauzia vibuyu vikombe ili tulipe loan unamhubiri alifanya hiyo makosa akachukua loan ya almost 1 billion Nairobi na income ni kidogo. Yaani unakaanga hapa unaamua leo nitafanyaje? Mm. Yeye nitaambia watu wabaye viatu vyangu. Unatoa kia. Unasema yoyote atakayeingiza mguu kwa kiatu hiki. Hiki kiatu nimekiombea siku saba. <laughs> Ukiingiza mguu tu hivi ninakuhakikishia mahali popote utakanyaga watakuwa kwako sasa mnapanga laini kama wengine na mkono miguu kubwa unajaribu kuingiza alafu mnaambua yoyote atakayeingiza mguu kwa kiatu ya rufu kumi kumi wewe ukisikia kiatu iko na power si hata hata mimi ningepanga laini utafanyaje <laughs> niliwaambia nilienda mahali buhubiri akatuambia tuguze miguu miguu yake inakuwa na power na nguvu fulani za kukutajirisha watu walipanga laini kuguza na alikuwa hana nguvu alikuwa si unamkumbuka alikuwa ni wale wanazaliwa na poli na miguu yake imekaa so akatuambia Mungu alimuahidi hiyo miguu imekaa hivi ina power mimi nilikuwa kwa laini pale hivi alafu unajua miguu tu miguu na sisi ni kwa ubaya ambia sasa ingine ikajiuliza kwani hii miguu na yangu alafu hiyo miguu tumeambua tutoe a certain amount of money mimi nikatoka kwa raini nasema waacha watu waguze miguu watu waliguza wengine walikuwa nakatalia hapo unashika hiyo miguu unaanza kuifanya mpaka unasikia amekukemea it is my rag alikuwa siyo wa Kenya 
wa mama waze na tumbo zao ni si chida za, za town unajua unakimbizwa na mabizu mpaka unaamua una kama kushika mguu ndio itabadilisha destiny yangu <laughs> itashika ile mugu. wacha tuongee ukweli ushaisukumwa na shida eh nauliza ushaisukumwa na shida mpaka mtu akikuambia hii mugu ndio iko na solutions utashika na shida nimekuambia shida ni kwamba wakati mtu anaenda beyond the means of living utasumbua watu sasa kama utachukua loan take it at your capacity kuna watu hapa ufai kuchukua loan zaidi ya 1100 don't go beyond 100 kuna watu hapa your capacity is only half a million wengine 1 million grow kuna wakati utachukua loan ya 20 million lakini saa hii usikimbie kuchukua 20 na haujui kufanya biashara haujui kuocholivia nikikuta profit yako kuna mtu nilisimama naye barabarani sasa tujuane tukaongea naye hapo kidogo alikuwa anauza vitu nikamuuliza profit yako kwa siku akaniambia ni 150 shillings huyo hafai kwenda kwa bank kuchukua 10 million itamzumbua akili atakaka afikirie nitaenda dubai alafu ataleta vitu haziezi nunulika huku so inatakanga grow grow yourself with that loan at your capacity but i tell you and i encourage you it's okay some of you have gone through generational trauma in the area of money na tutaanza kesho tuseme kile kilibomoa wazazi akita tubomoa nasema kile kilizuia mama akita nizuia mimi kile kimefukuza wahubiri na, na kuru sete akita nifukuza kuna pasta aliniambia mimi na kuru town kanisa a uh-uh. Aliniambia hizi viti nitapeleka kwa nyumba ziwe zinakaliwa na watoto nikiwa mgeni. Maana alikuwa amejaribu akaona cha mtamakumi. Unajua <laughs> rent ya town ni kubwa. Kwanza ukitoka, ukitoka, ukitoka na huku ndani. Kanisa unalipa 2000 kwa mwezi, lease. Uingia town uitishwe 2200, hauna capacity. Si ati hauna faith, capacity ndiyo hauna so mtu huenda na capacity ili yako nayo mimi nilitoka Nairobi mahali tunalipa hall 1 million so kwangu 200 nasikia can, we can do it lakini mtu ametoka dondori eh amen kwanza akuje akae na mimi hapa mpaka capacity ifanye nini sasa akienda hall ya 100000 moyo wake unaweza vuta hiyo pesa maana mali ni moyo it is your heart Moyo wako ndio unategemea anga utavuta. Kuna watu moyo yao ni kidogo haiwezange kuvuta mali. Moyo wako unaweza capacity iwe kubwa mpaka unavuta kwa siku unavuta 1100. Praise the Lord. Kwa hivyo usiende kuishi milimani na hauna capacity. Unaenda huko. It ni prophetic action. Hii nyumba ni pesa ngapi? 150,000. Na sasa hiyo pengine umepata tu pesa hapa 1300. Ukishuka kutoka huko Hakuna mtu atakwambia. Kuna jamaa alinyonyesha picha zamani, alikuwa ameenda milimani akakodisha nyumba kubwa. Akitoka huko, alitoka na bag. Alikuwa ananiambia alikuwa hana mpaka gari, anatabiria garage. Hivi nimekuja milimani, sijui nani alikuwa amemhubiria. Unajua kuna mahubiri naweza kukufanya uende huku ukipiga watu makofi na ukitembea hivi ushaiongereshwa na motivational speaker motivational speaker anakuambia don't fear no one alafu anakuambia you are the most powerful creature on earth yani ukisho ukitoka hiyo meeting unaenda ni kama zile tulikuwa tunaona movies za kina Jackie Chan usiku mimi nilikuwa Mombasa naenda hizo video kef una wanapigana pupupupu inamalizika movie kisha uogopi wa hizi ulikuwa unatoka unatembea hivi kwanza unatafuta trouble nani anaweza unajiona wewe ndio yule karatesian yule main actor unaenda na ukali fulani lakini ukashikwa ndio utajua akwambia <laughs> kushuka kule alipotaho inaitwa nini alinyang'anywa kila kitu akaenda na huku ponda mali kutulia sasa alikuwa anashukuru Mungu <laughs> ponda mali mpaka wakati wako hata mimi sijaishi milimani na nawahubiria hapo maana nilijisikiza capacity nikaona capacity nilipoingia huku mizi kuingia milimani 
Nilienda mahali kuna nyani na huku tukiwa na mke wangu. Tuko tunaishi kanyumba hapo kanaingia nyani nyingi. Hata mwenyewe alikuwa anatukodisha pesa kidogo maana alijua watu wanatoroka kwa sababu ya nyani. Tulifukuzwa huko na nyani lakini pesa ilikuwa kidogo. Mimi nakuombea katika jina la Yesu. Whatever that overthrew your family, whatever that brought down your people will not bring you down. Father I bless your congregation. Ninaomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo kila mmoja ambaye ameingia mahali hapa baraka ya Mungu ikakae juu yake. Ninatangaza katika jina la Yesu Kristo we shall break some of the limitations that were placed in our mind. Our mindset has to be delivered. Ninatangaza ukombozi wa fikra. Ninatangaza mawazo yako yatafunguka. Mahali popote ulipitia jambo fulani in the family lika kuzuia kuona maono makubwa leo tunatangaza there is a breakthrough i declare you are breaking through in the name of jesus and as you leave this lunch hour ninatangaza enda ufanikiwe enda ufanye kitu haijawahi fanyika kwenu you will be the pioneer of some things in your family mambo haijawahi kuwa introduced in the family you will begin those things in the name of jesus vitu havijawaionekana kwa familia yenu you will be the first to introduce them in the mighty name of jesus mahali baba yako hangeweza kufika ama mama yako leo natangaza we are breaking through we are breaking through their limitations and whatever that overcame them we are overcoming you know i'm gonna say in the name of jesus i will become what nobody has ever been in my family sema their records are breaking sema their records are breaking in the name of jesus tangaza their limitations are breaking in the mighty name of jesus sema i'm recovering from generational trauma from generational trauma i'm recovering from generational trauma in jesus mighty name amen Father we sanctify the offering we are giving for the work of ministry and I ask that you may bless each and every one as we give in Jesus name we pray